On October 25th, the Toronto Blue Jays announced Charlie Montoyo as the 13th manager in franchise history. And today we are fortunate enough to have Charlie here to meet with the media. Before we hear from Charlie and take questions, General Manager Ross Atkins would like to see, say a few words. Yeah, just uh, a little bit about our process and you know how, how excited we are as a group here today. This is um, you know, a really, really proud moment for myself and, and for the Toronto Blue Jays. I think just wanted to share uh, you know, a little bit in, in background, in terms of background, as we, you know, as we went through the search process and you know, considered all of our alternatives, we had a lot of good alternatives. You know, we really did. We felt good about the work that was done in baseball operations. It was a very large group of people gathering a lot of information. And it stuck out to me as I was, you know, resumes are obviously a big part, um, you know, of learning about someone's background. And we certainly knew where Charlie had been. And I, I was a farm director in 2007. That was his first year as a AAA manager for the Durham Bulls. And I remember, you know, watching him across the field and thinking, you know, year in and year out, not just 2007, the, you know, this, this individual is doing a very good job because it could be a group of free agent players, it could be prospect laden, uh, but year in and year out, the Durham Bulls were more than competitive. Uh, they, they played the game hard, they played the game the right way, and they won. Say what you will about winning in the minor leagues, I believe it's very important. Uh, we share that here, they shared that in Tampa Bay. And you know, being a farm director, watching him year in and year out win, I was asking our managers, the time, Tori Lovello, and then it was Mike Sarbaugh, then it was Chris Trimmy. You know, tell me about Charlie Montoyo. And they would always talk about his competitiveness. They would always talk about his leadership. They'd always talk about the things I mentioned, having the results that he had. Uh, and they would always, always talk about the person and, and, and the character and how good of a person he was. So this is a very, very competitive world we're in, and that's uncommon. It is unusual. Those guys are competing for jobs, even though it's a different organization. It's not that typical that uh, peers are speaking of, of others that are, that are clearly competing to get to the major leagues against one another the way that uh, those individuals spoke of them. So as we continued our work, and it wasn't just me making phone calls, as, as I mentioned, it was a large group of people. One phone call I made to a player that, that Charlie had re recently impacted uh, you know, really struck me. So I texted this, this individual and asked him if we could speak about Charlie and about the impact and influence he's had on him. And he asked me because he, he needed some time. He said, can we talk tonight? Sure. So when I called, he had clearly prepared for the interaction and he thought through why he thought Charlie would be an exceptional manager. And he said, first and foremost, he is a remarkable human being. He's a great father. He's a great husband. And it gives me a great deal of confidence that the guidance he's providing me is very good guidance. He does that consistently, and I want to get to the field every day to see him. That is leadership in baseball. And, and we could not be uh, more proud and more honored to have added that leadership to our culture and our environment. So I'd like to welcome Charlie Montoyo as the 13th manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. And I, I couldn't be more proud in doing so. It's funny, I want to thank people and I don't want to forget anybody and, and I forgot my cheater so I didn't know that I can't even see it right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but anyways, uh, of course, I want to thank uh, Mark and Ross for this great opportunity. I don't take it for granted and you have no idea how thankful I am for this opportunity and I'm, I'm going to do my best, guys, to 
make you proud. And also want to uh, thank the Tampa Bay Rays. You know, I was here for 22 years. Uh, Eric Heim, Matt Silverman, Tom Foley, Mitch Lukovic. Uh, all those guys were great. Uh, of course, my mom and dad. Uh, my mom, Nidia. My dad, Felix. My sister, Wandy. And my two brothers, uh, Robert and Felito. Uh, my whole town of Florida, Puerto Rico, and, and Puerto Rico. Uh, that little town of 12,000 people, they're jumping around of happiness. And, and they couldn't be any prouder of me. And, and that makes me really happy. Uh, also, Burton Rocks, uh, Don Orman, that guy's my angel. He's the reason I came to the States for the first time. And, and he's the reason I'm here. Uh, and, and of course, uh, Tyson, my son, uh, he's 15 years old, great kid, great brother. Uh, my son, Alex, he's 11 years old, and he's going to be the Toronto Blue Jays number one fan. I'll tell you that right now. And of course, uh, my wife, uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even be here either. Uh, I've said this story before. Uh, I'm glad I went back to Charleston for my second year because that's where I met her. And, and she's been the rock of, of, of the family. And one beautiful thing about this is that she got to fly first class coming this way, <laughs> <laughs> which she, she deserves, you know. Deserves. That's, that's awesome. And, and, you know, I just want to end there. Like, she, babe, you've been great, and, and you're one of the main reasons I'm here. And... and she picked everything I have on because she picked it. She, you know, we, we're, we're a good team. So, uh, and again, uh, I'm very thankful. And I, I, I'm sure I forgot some names, but uh, yeah, thank you, Mark and Ross, for this great opportunity. All right, thank you, Charlie and Ross. Um, before we take questions, please remember to raise your hand and wait for a microphone to be brought to you and identify yourself and your media affiliation. Mike Wilner. Mike Wilner from the Blue Jays Radio Network. All right, we seem to have the audio in order now. Uh, Charlie, welcome and congratulations. I just want to know, um, Ross said glowing things about you that your other managers in AAA have said and, and other farm directors. Since you got this job and they announced it, there's been just this outpouring from the baseball community, how happy they are for you, how proud they are of you. And, uh, and to a man, it's... He deserves it. This is the guy who, who deserves this opportunity. What's it feel like for you to hear all that from everyone around the game? I think that's, that's the biggest thing for me. Uh, not only when he told me that I was going to be the next manager, but the, the reaction of, of all my friends, all the baseball people in, in, in the game. And one phone call that it touched me a lot and, and I shared with, with, with uh, Ross was uh, Don Zimmer's wife. She said, she sent me, and I have it, uh, I'll play it for you guys later because it, it meant a lot to me. He said, Don Zimmer in, in heaven, he'll be so proud of you right now because you did it the right way. You, you coaching the mountain leagues and, and, now, and now you're managing the big leagues and he'll be so proud of you. So yeah, that, that really touched me, but there's plenty of more of, of good phone calls and, and texts. And me being that kind of guy, I reply to all of them because I don't want anybody to say I've changed already. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, uh, Rich Griffin, your former PR guy in Montreal. Um, I, <laughs> I, um, with all those years that you managed in the minor leagues, eight years at Durham, uh, without access to the modern analytics, I would assume you get to the major leagues and for four years you, you're managing or you're watching a manager perform differently. Are you like a born-again analytics guy now that you've seen it and our, mo our Toronto fans going to be have to get used to the opener and infield shifts all the time? I, I wouldn't say that. I think I, I'm a blend of old school and analytics. So, you know, I think using both, I think that makes you a better manager. And yeah, but no, I wouldn't say I'm just one way or the other. But, you know, I know uh, wherever I can fi find useful information, that's where I'm going to go. and, and and that's why it's going to be so big when we uh, get our coaching stuff and then talk about it. And, and so, uh, yeah. So, but no, I wouldn't call myself that. But I'm a blend. 
Hi, Charlie. Um, Eduardo Harari from La Portada, Canada. Um, one of the things that hasn't been said enough is that you are the first Hispanic manager in, in the Blue Jays organization. Uh, and how does that feel? How does that feel being Boricua as well? You know what's beautiful just happened in the last couple of days? Uh, as you guys know, uh, Puerto Rico got hit by a big storm last year, and we lost many lives and stuff. And then all of a sudden, in, in the last two days, uh, a Puerto Rican manager takes uh, a team to the, big, to the World Series and wins the World Series, Alex Cora. And then the next day, uh, I get introduced at the as a manager for for uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays, so there's a lot of happiness in Puerto Rico now, and I'm, and I'm proud of that. Charlie, hi, Steve Simmons from the Toronto Sun. Um, last night, of course, is an important night for your country. Today's an important night for your country. The best player in Blue Jays history happens to be a Puerto Rican. Um, when you factor on everything that's going on. Um, what does today mean to you and to your country? And, and again, yeah, because it, it, it means a lot. And, and again, it, it was so tough, you know, not having power and, and, and losing lives and stuff, you know, and, and, and not having many Latin managers in the big leagues. And so just by what happened last night and what's going on today, that's just going to bring so much, you know, so much joy to people that suffered so much last year. And, and, and I, I cannot thank uh, Mark and Ross enough for giving me this opportunity. All right here, Adrian Gobriel with City News, City TV. What would you say when it, when it comes down to decision making uh, for you as a manager, what would you rely on more on, on your gut or analytics? And if I could get a two-part question then, what would you also say to critics who say analytics are, are killing the game, the romance side of the game? Yeah, I, I see what people mean by that, but uh, both, you know, a lot of times analytics are just giving you what you, were, what you knew already by managing, so you got feeling and then you say, okay, yeah, I was right, you know, or, or yeah, so it, it's going to be, I'm going to have seven coaches, I'm going to get the, use that information, the analytics side, my gut feeling, and then we're going to make a decision. That's how I'm going to do it, not just one way or the other. Hi, Rosie DeMano from the Toronto Star. Um, all those years in the minors, I think it's 18, right? Yeah, but yeah. who's counting? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you may have uh, enjoyed them a great deal and had a lot of success, but what took so long? You know, uh, and again, I'm, I'm going to give a, a message here that because uh, uh, I think it was 2003 when, when Jim Leland won. And I remember uh, he was looking straight to the camera, and I was in the instructional league, and he was one of those guys that uh, said, uh, you know, all those guys in, in the instructional league that are watching me right now, just keep you doing your job. You never know. Dreams come through and stuff. So I want to take this moment right now with that question you just asked and tell the same thing to all those minor league guys that are grinding it out right now, and, and just keep doing your job. You know, keep, keep teaching those players, and, you know, and you know, and you never know. If a guy like me got here, it could be you too. So yeah, don't don't think ahead. Don't think about moving up. Just think about your job at hand. And you're gonna be a very good minor league player. And who knows, you might be a big league manager someday, like I like I I am now. Hi, Charlie. Over here. Where are we? from the Blue Jay social media team. We have a fan question for you from Ryan, Metal Max 21 and the question is, what would you say was the best advice you've ever received from another manager to help you in this role? Just from watching guys, uh, just being positive, you know, it's a tough game, you know, and I remember a, a guy named Tom Gamboa, he managed me in winter ball and I used, actually, you know what's funny, I used his signs all the way from, from Princeton, West Virginia, to my four years in the big leagues. They hold the same signs for 22 years. And one of the things that he always did, that I always learned from, is just to be positive. Like, here, I, I could bring a lefty in, right, to get a double play ball, and the ball finds a hole. 
I would talk to that guy, I would tell him, great job, you, you, you did what I asked you to do, it just happens to find the hole. And you know what, that kid's gonna feel a lot better next time he goes in because you know, he, he, he did his job, it just didn't work out. So that's, that's one thing I learned, you know. Charlie, Steve Buffery from the Toronto Sun. Um, I know you've only been here a short while, but what are your thoughts on what the Jays have in their lineup, what they have in their minor league system, and what do you think you can do with this team this upcoming season? You know, looking, looking at this team from the other side uh, almost reminds me of, of the team we have in Tampa. You know, a, a lot of younger kids. You know, there's going to be a lot of, have to be a lot of player development deals we got to teach. And... But honestly, I, I wasn't even thinking about that for the last couple of days. Uh, I wanted to make sure uh, I got this job first before I started thinking about it. <laughs> Cause that's, uh, and that's what it happened when I, when I got called up to the big leagues. I, I didn't even call my mom and dad until I was in that bench, make sure they didn't change their mind. So <laughs> same way here. Now, now that I'm here, it's official. Then I'll talk to Mark and our front office and stuff and we start talking about that, but answer your question a little bit. Yeah, it looks like a fun team. It's going to be a fun team to manage. Charlie, uh, Griffin Starr. Um, this Blue Jays roster doesn't have the uh, base running ability, the speed, the defense, or the power arms that the Rays had. Can you plug a roster into a plan, or do you have to adjust a plan off of spring training to what you have? You know, part, part, part of managing is adjusting to what you have. So uh, I'm going to adjust to what we got. And we're going to play to win, and, and we go from there. If it's a team that doesn't have any speed, I'm not going to try to steal bases. That just wouldn't be smart. So yeah, I'm going to adjust to whatever team we decide to have at the end of spring training. That's how I'm going to manage. And a and, and good example, uh, the Orioles a couple of years ago, they didn't run because they, they hit three run homers. So it wasn't smart for Showalter to throw a steal bases because they were getting thrown out. Same, same thing here. Whenever we get to that, those 25 players, I'll make an adjustment and I'll see what we have and, and we'll manage that way. Charlie Shai Davidi from Sportsnet. Congratulations and welcome. When the players arrive into the clubhouse and you've touched on it in small pieces, what kind of manager can they expect to, to work with over the coming season? Somebody who communicates a lot, and I think that's one of my strengths. Uh, the respect, I respect the player, because I know it's not an easy game to play, so whatever I do as a manager, I think as a player, like how would I feel when somebody's talking to me? So I think that's my, my main thing, uh, the respect that I have for the players, and, and I know they're human beings and they got lives, they got families, so that, that's the biggest thing for me. And the other one, when it comes to me as a manager, is, is someone that I know, I don't know, I don't have all the answers. So I'm always looking for useful information and, and, and it could come from, from different places, from coaches, from the front office. So, you know, that player is always going to know where he stands because I know that's also big, the honesty. And so, yeah, I think they would be fine. Thank you. Uh, Charlie, Gregor Chisholm with uh, MLB.com. You, you played with Vladimir Guerrero uh, in, in the minor leagues. Just wondering if you guys stayed in touch at all over the years and, and what your thoughts are on this coming full circle now that you're uh, the manager or going to be the manager for his kid as well. Yeah, uh, Vlad was the best uh, prospect I've seen in the minor leagues. Uh, probably him and Josh Hamilton uh, in my career. And so uh, isn't that I saw him three years ago when, when when his son came to here for a tryout, or he just signed, and he was sitting batting practice and stuff. So uh, Blatt's still the same. He hasn't changed. He gave me a big hug, a big smile, and he was happy to see me. So it's going to be a lot of fun for me to manage his kid, and and I'm sure Blatt's going to, you know, give me, you know, he's going to talk to me about his kid, and, and you know, so yeah, I can't wait for that to to see Blatt and give him a big hug, and and I'm sure he's going to be happy that I'm going to be the manager of his son. Charlie, Steve Urgent here with TSN. Uh, welcome. Um, as someone who's probably watched from, from the other side of the dugout, what, what's the scouting report from your point of view on Vlad Guerrero Jr.? And as someone who's you know, part of, uh, in charge of the development of the team, how do you see yourself bringing Vladdy along in 2019? 
Well, to tell you the truth, I've never seen him play. I just, he's all over the news because he's the number one prospect uh, in, in the mountain leagues, but I have never seen him play. So, but I'm looking forward to it. Rosa again. Um, how do you brace yourself sort of psychologically maybe for what is going to be a whole lot of losing likely in the next couple of years? Really? Uh, I'm sorry to break the news. I, I, I don't think that way. Uh, we, we're going to play the win from the beginning. And so, no, that does, I'm not even thinking that way. We, we're going to put a team. We're going to, from spring training, we're going to, from the first game of spring training, we're going to play the win. And, and then whatever happens after that happens after that. But, no, that, I don't think like that, no. We're going to play the win. Hey, Charlie, Keegan Matheson here with Baseball Toronto. Uh, I wanted to ask you, maybe you've had these discussions already with Ross, but about what strategies you think you can take over from Tampa Bay that would benefit the Blue Jays, thinking specifically with you know, use of the opener, bullpen management, things like that. Yeah, that, that'll be a conversation with our front office, our coaches. Uh, just because uh, I come from Tampa Bay, doesn't I mean we're, we're going to do everything that they did over there. It's, we're a different team, and we're going we're gonna to adjust to what we have. So, yeah, when you guys talk about openers and all that stuff, that doesn't I mean that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to get our brains together and, and, and talk about it, and we go from there. Uh, Charlie and Ross, did you guys know each other at all before the interview process started? And... As the, from each of your perspectives over the interview process, when did things start to click? What, what worked in terms of the, the relationship between the two of you? I'll answer first, yeah. So, um, you know, I had shaken his hand a couple of times behind, standing behind a batting cage and uh, in the major leagues when he got, th got there, and I had never met him in the minor leagues. I had certainly uh, seen his work and seen him across the field. And over the years, not just over the last month, I have always asked about Charlie, so I feel like I know him well. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the phone call I shared, that was just one of, you know, phone calls that I had that were upwards of 10 uh, to front office executives, coaches, people that I trust in the game that did know him. And, I, you know, I, I think it, the relationships I had with the people that I was calling, whether uh, that be a former manager, current manager, current front office leaders uh, had so much conviction and trust in their perspective and their knowledge of Charlie that I felt like I knew him before I met him. And then when we sat down and, and spent the day and a half together, it was, it was. I mean, we do have a lot in common, having been in our careers in the minor leagues or focused on the minor leagues, so um, a very, very comfortable interaction. Uh, but I, but nothing's more powerful than what we had learned about him previously. So, well, this is how it happened to me. Uh, of course, when I was interviewing, we went out to dinner, Mark and Ross, and you know what? It was supposed to be a, an hour dinner. It took forever because the waiter took forever. So that worked out for me. Like I cannot wait to see that waiter so I can tip him even more <laughs> because it, it, it was awesome. I got to know these guys more and. My thought when that dinner was over, it would be great to work for these two guys. And yeah, so th that's my story. Charlie, the, um, your, your two major league managers were Felipe Alou in 93, Kevin Cash the last four years. Um, managers in the major leagues borrow from people they've worked with or managed against in your case. Uh, could you name three guys that you have borrowed, that you have admired and borrowed things from, and could you talk about Felipe as your first manager? Yeah, Felipe. Felipe was awesome. He was a, kind of that even kill kind of person. Uh, communicated a lot, and Joe can speak of that because he was there too with with me. And and Tony Muser was another guy who I played for who was real honest, and I think that was very good. And then again, uh, Tom Gamboa, Tom Gamboa, his honesty to me and and his being so positive to me that that I said well, if I ever managed, I'm gonna be like these guys. And so I, I took communication, the honesty, and and the positive side. I think that that makes it for a for a good manager because they were. Yeah. 
Charlie, with the uh, older teams here the last few years and going a bit younger now, uh, at the major league level, how do you balance uh, you know, coaching regularly and trying to win each game and play veterans, but still finding time to teach and develop young players? I'm looking forward to that. That's just everything I've done in my life, just teaching and helping younger players to, to get better. And it's, it's going to be awesome. And again, uh, that's why fi finding the right coaching staff It'll be very important to me, and I already talked to Ross about it. I haven't been able to sleep because I, that's my number one goal, to find that coaching staff that can help these kids get better. Charlie, that was actually going to be my next question. The, the coaching staff, I know you've had a few days to, to kind of think about it. Um, how long do you think it's going to take you to put a staff together, and, and do, you guys, do you have guys in mind already, or what's that process going to be like? I don't know how long it's going to take, but we're going to take our time picking the right people and, you know, whether it was coaches that were here before or whatever it is, we're going to try to pick the right people because, again, we think, Ross and me think that's very important, Mark. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we're working on it right now and, and whatever it takes, as long as it takes, so we can find the right people is very important. Hey, Charlie, Ben Nicholson Smith with Sportsnet. I'm wondering, obviously, spring training a long way away now, but how do you intend to use those next few months to prepare for the season? And that will start by finding the, the, the coaches, and, and then so we can start talking about mapping out the, the spring training. That's why as soon as we can find those coaches, then we can start thinking about spring training. Yeah. Charlie, uh, Nick here, Yahoo Sports. When you watch the way the game is managed in the major leagues right now, are there any strategies you feel are overused or things you feel like you would do more of compared to what you see, say, in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, it, I'm, I'm one of those guys that never like second-guessing the, the other guy because I know what it's like. So, you know, I'm sure whatever decision they make, they thought about it uh, pretty strongly. So, I mean, the shifting and all that stuff is just part of the game now, but... People do it because there's numbers, and, and, and that's one thing I could tell you that, that I learned being a, a, with the race, that some of those things work, and, you know, and then you can, there's all this stuff that don't work, so I learned stuff like, you know, you, you got to make an adjustment, it's a game of adjustment, so you could be shifting one guy in the first half, the second half, that guy may can make an adjustment, so now you have to make an adjustment as a manager and put the second baseman to the other side, and just stuff like that. It's a game of, of uh, adjustments, and, and, and we'll go game by game. So, yeah, did that answer your question? Yeah. Charlie, hi, Ian Harrison from Associated Press. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. You told the story of the, the dinner, and I wonder whether the time you were waiting to get served, was it as beneficial to learn about Ross and Mark as to sort of pitch yourself in that time? And, and Ross, could you give your impressions, memories of that night as well? I wasn't, I was trying to be myself, you know, and, and that's when advice I got. And so, yeah, I mean, the, the dinner took forever, but it, it was just, we were just talking baseball. And, and for me, that's, I could have fun with anybody talking baseball. So, uh, and of course, just, just two guys that are, that are awesome, but, uh, yeah, it, no, I, it, I wasn't trying to pitch myself or give ideas. It, it was just a conversation about players, about coaches, about everything. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's certainly an, uh, an important part is making sure that there is some connection and uh, ease of communication. But, you know, any, in any hire and in any interview process is just a piece of the equation. And that was... Um, you know, it, it, it was an enjoyable time, it was, but it was all baseball and, and all personal, making sure that, um, you know, we could learn as much about one another as possible. Um, you know, I, I believe very strongly that that is a two-way street, that, you know, in the interview process that they are learning as much about us as we are about them, and they can oftentimes become a bit of an interrogation, and we were trying to avoid that. Uh, the Bosque, I believe, was the name of the restaurant. <laughs> you you played here. You played in Ottawa and Montreal, so you spent some time up here, and you touched upon it in your press release. But what are your thoughts of managing in Toronto and Canada? You know, the only major league team in major yeah, league baseball. You know what? It's and, and again, it's, it's awesome because this is my favorite city to come in the big leagues. And as you know, we're in Tampa Bay in this division, so we come here uh, 
three times a year, and I love Canada. I also play in Ottawa, so that was that's a beautiful place. I had a great time there, and you know, there, there's I've been in the big leagues with three teams, uh, of, of course, one Tampa Bay, and the other the other two it's it's uh, the Expos and now the Toronto Blue Jays. I love Canada. <laughs> Charlie, um, the have you heard from any current? roster players on the Blue Jays. Uh, do you plan on texting, meeting, or calling all of them before spring training? And is it possible that coming out of spring training you'll have a pitching staff that doesn't include a five-man rotation? And uh, does it depend on what you see at spring training? Yeah, I mean, right now uh, I, was, I was waiting for this to be official. I already asked Ross for the, for the phone numbers of the players. so. Uh, Sometime tomorrow, I'm going to start making phone calls and getting to know those guys. And to me, that's that's very important to me. And we're going to have the, also the fan fest here sometime in January, so that'll be a great time to meet them in person. Also, yeah, I'm looking forward to that very much. Huh? We we haven't talked about that yet or anything yet. So yeah, yeah, I'll tell you in a couple of days, right, Russ? Yeah. <laughs> is home to you and will your family be moving to Toronto with you? Yeah, that's what Russ said. You better move to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, yeah. You <laughs> uh, well, my wife is here. I'll tell you after, <laughs> after she looks around. <laughs> She's the boss of the house. <laughs> Last question. Hi, Charlie. It's uh, Caitlin McGrath from The Athletic. Just wondering, we've seen a trend of younger guys getting big league manager jobs. Did you feel any sense of urgency to get that first big league job now? No, because uh, like I said before, I, I was always trying to be the best of where I was and never thinking ahead. So again, like when I was in Durham, I, w I wanted to be the best triple A manager I could be. When I got to the third base coach in the big leagues, I wanted to be the third best third base coach. And that might sound fake for some people, but that's just the truth. Like, I, I was never looking ahead to, you know, and, and yes, I saw the trend, and like my friend Rocco Baldelli, during the year I was telling him, dude, they're looking for guys like you, come on, buddy, you, you, you gotta do it. Because I love him, and he, he got one, so I'm really happy for him. And then, you know, and then it happened to me, and, and it's awesome, you just never know, you just never know. <laughs>